1970 was a big year for CUDA fans, and this is a hot one. The base model 1970 Barracuda came with a yawn maker six cylinder, but the AAR was a totally different story. You see, Trans Am Racing required that there had to be a street version of any body style that raced in the series, and this is one of those cars. It's interesting to deconstruct the AAR in the context of the day. The AAR model was Plymouth's street version of the comparable Trans Am series race car, as the rules of Trans Am stated that the automaker had to produce 2,500 consumer copies of any race car campaigned in the Trans Am series. Chevrolet had the Z28 Camaro, Ford had Boss 302 Mustangs, AMC had the Javelin, and Plymouth chose to name theirs after Dan Gurney's All-American Racers team, who built and raced in the Trans Am series with highly modified Cudas like this one. To my knowledge, the AAR is the only production car named after the race team that used the car in a series. Or am I wrong? Shelby was the racer's name, but they also built the original street-going GT350 cars. Unfinished Mustangs left the line to be completed at the Shelby shop. But in this case, AAR Cudas were completely built on the regular Hamtramck Michigan Plymouth assembly line, so it's not like they left as unfinished bodies that were completed in the AAR race facility. AMC did have the Ronnie Kaplan and Mark Donahue Javelins, but they were not branded completely after the team that raced them. The rulebook stated that if a part was special to the race car, a street version also had to exist. So if the race car had special body modifications like spoilers, then the street version had to have that as well. Certain safety items like roll cages, padding and stuff didn't have to be used on the streetcars. But it was cool to see that the Sports Car Club of America sanctioning body did allow for the use of aftermarket performance parts on race cars, provided that they were integrated into the original equipment manufacturer's parts catalog. Race versions had to run a 305 or smaller cube V8, but Chrysler didn't have one, so the 340 was allowed for production. These were very stout blocks built with huge main bearing webs to support the forged crankshaft and 10 and a half to one compression pistons. The AAR has always been a favorite of mine and not just because they look cool, these 340s ran hard. It breathes through a special six barrel induction system. It's got a special intake manifold, high flow cylinder heads and exhaust, and it made 290 horsepower. Or at least that's what Plymouth told the public. The 346 barrel was rated at 290 horsepower, just like the Boss 302 and Z28 in the competition. But we've seen dyno tests up around 320 horsepower for these in stock tune. You can get a four-speed manual or an automatic transmission like this car has, and the rear is stuffed with a sure grip 355 to one gear set. These knock down mid 14 second quarter mile times, but they were really more about slot car racing on open roads than going in a straight line. The AAR is a total package car, with improvements made to the suspension and body, as well as the engine. Most obvious is the AAR logo capped strobe stripe, blinking out a pattern from back to front, leading the eye to the Organisol black textured fiberglass pinned down hood. These elements don't jump out quite as much on a dark green car, but they still look awesome. The rear spoiler looks great from the back or the front and is contoured nicely to the rear of the car. Bright rally wheels with staggered tires hide front disc and rear drum brakes and specially muffled side pipes, well, they kind of blast everybody that you pass. Wide-eyed fog lights look to the future and turn signals are hidden above the grill. Stiffer torsion bars and shocks work with the oversized sway bar to keep the AAR flat in the turns. We dig the 150 mile an hour speedo and the 8,000 RPM tack, and a four-way gauge shows oil pressure, temp, 
fuel and electrical juice. Below that sits an AM tuner and above it is a clock with delta at zero minutes and hours in the inner ring. This AAR also sports a bench seat with a fold down armrest, no doubt to keep the driver from sliding out the passenger window under hard left turns. This car has no frills and it doesn't need any. We love the fact that this car comes from a time period when the race cars had to at least look like the street cars. I mean today when you peel the stickers off a race car, you can't even tell what brand it is. We hope you enjoyed your time with us checking out this AAR CUDA. And if you like this stuff, go to our website at musclecaroftheweek.com because we have a lot more just like it from the Brothers Collection. See you next time.